Hi guys, hi everyone. Welcome to day four of our global call to consciousness that we started this week in response to the mass hysteria going on in our world. I was gonna say country, but it's all around the world. So today is day four and I wanna talk about the emotion of anger that is getting triggered uh, by individuals, perhaps by yourself, by people all over the world. And uh, let's talk a little bit about anger. Hi there, how are you? Behavioral health, hi. I studied public health in grad school, so I'm curious what behavioral health uh, page is all about. So what is anger, for those of you that are on, what does anger feel like in your body? Go ahead and take a couple seconds to just write to me in the comments what anger feels like as I describe to you what anger feels like in my body. And you know, we all experience our emotions differently. For me, anger, um, there's a couple different layers of it. So my, uh, initially my face gets really hot, you know, and this is something I identified um, pretty early on as an adult that is like, oh, my face gets hot when I get angry. If, I, if the anger, anger continues to build, my lower back, like my lumbar spine, like my L4-5, turns like, I feel like the blood down there is boiling. That's what anger feels like to me. Hey guys, so go ahead and tell me in the comments what anger feels like in your body as I continue to tell you. And if I continue to stay angry, if it's an extension, extended period of time that I'm angry, I uh, get a little bit lightheaded and my, my lips actually turn color. Like it's because, I think it's because of the surge of energy that is getting pushed up my body from my lower chakras to, <laughs> to my head, to my upper chakras, to, my, to, to the upper parts of my body. Um, so Tanya, hi. Um, Banish, hi. I don't know if I'm saying people's names correctly, I'm sorry. Uh, Behavior Hall, tell me in the comments what anger feels like in your body. And looking at um, chakras, you know, uh, you know, if you're curious where the anger comes from, and as disclaimer, uh, I'm not a chakra expert, uh, but I do follow one chakra girl. And the emotion of anger is actually rooted in your third chakra, your solar plexus, which is like the center of all your power. The emotion of rage, on the other hand, is actually deeper. It comes from your root chakra, from your first chakra, your survival chakra. And then the emotion of grief comes from our fourth chakra, our heart chakra, so that heart space. And for some of you, and I know for myself, we might experience grief and anger simultaneously, right? You know, maybe we see um, a terrible uh, story in the news of someone. I'll tell. I'll give you an example. I recently heard a story about a uh, a little boy in Iran who lost his father and his brother in a car accident because the guy who was driving their the car it was a rental car with a rental the driver. Uh, he was going 130 kilometers an hour. That equates to. No, I'm sorry, 220 kilometers an hour, which equates to 130 miles per hour. And he crashed his car and it rolled. He died, the driver died instantly. And then the little boy, the older boy was able to get out. His dad got stuck in the car. I don't know if he was able to get out, but I, from what I remember, the, the younger brother, his legs get stuck underneath the car. And uh, the older brother comes to help him and the little one says, go, I'm stuck. I, I can't get out. And the boy, you know, goes away from the car and the car explodes and his little brother dies in the explosion and his body gets burnt. So when I heard this story, there was a lot of grief. I felt a lot of grief in my heart. I felt like a tightening up in my heart. But I also simultaneously had a lot of anger. I had a lot of anger for the driver because apparently this driver would brag about multiple times getting into car accidents where his car would like roll and he didn't, and he survived them. It was like a, a point of like something he was very proud of. So when I heard this story, simultaneously I felt anger. I felt what I just described, what anger feels like in my body, which is, you know, in my lower spine, I feel hot. I feel like the blood's boiling. It rushes up to my head. I get lightheaded. My 
lips kind of turn a color, uh, my heart rate beats up, but at the same time, I felt a lot of grief. I felt a lot of grief for the little boy who watched his brother pass away. I felt grief for the mother who wasn't even there to protect her children. And our emotions are not so black and white, right? So there, there's a wide range of things that we feel every single day. And we don't even know what we're feeling. And if we are tuned into our emotions, uh, we might have some ability to, I don't want to say control it and like kind of push it down, but ability to respond and not react. So let me see what you guys are saying. So as you're joining, please tell me in the comments what anger feels like in your body. So Tanya wrote, it feels hot. My face gets very hot, but I also feel sick to my stomach, like a nausea. Yeah, I get that. Hi, Deborah. How are you? Hello, hello, Paolo. Hello. Anyone else writing about what anger feels like in their body? No. Okay. Um, so, so the reason I, I'm talking about what anger feels like is because there's a lot of emotions being felt right now at this time in our world, given the hysteria, the mass fear around coronavirus. And it's not just fear. We talked about fear the last two days, but I want to talk about anger specifically because there are things that are happening that we're learning about in the news that are creating a response of anger in our body. And I want you to be aware of what anger feels like for you so you know that your response is one of anger. Uh, and it's coming from that third chakra from your solar plexus and your solar plexus just so you know is it's your source of personal power will energy um, effectiveness self-esteem social identity and happiness that's what the uh, this third chakra the solar plexus kind of dominates and so anger comes from there if you feel rage like you want to like kill someone that comes from your survival chakra which is at the bottom at your root um so why are we talking about anger? Because there's stuff happening in the media that's creating an anger response. And I, um, I heard this story earlier today that a Utah Jazz basketball player, uh, I'm not going to name him because I think the media is also trying not to name him. He, um, he was poking fun at the level of precaution reporters were taking to not be infected, right? And so there was a, um, a rule to stay six to eight feet away from the players during a press conference. And uh, this player was making fun of that. And so what he did uh, as poking fun, as showing, hey, I'm not scared of this virus, he went and touched every single microphone uh, on that panel. And turns out later on, it was revealed I mean, this is just fresh, fresh off the press, so you know, don't quote me, but it was revealed that he tested positive for coronavirus. This will anger a lot of people because yes, we shouldn't be living in fear. Yes, we shouldn't be um, isolating ourselves completely from the world, but we also should take common sense into account, right? We should wash our hands, as we've been told over and over by the media. We should do our best to not spread germs, regardless if you have coronavirus or not. So for this player to arrogantly do that, to go and touch every single microphone that's on that panel, not knowing who's touched that, so he's putting himself at risk, and also not knowing if he had it yet, and there was a risk of someone having it on the team, which is why they got tested, and putting others at in you know in close vicinity to this virus that can cause an angry response by a lot of people i when i heard it i almost i i, I laughed a little bit because i uh was thinking about the movie idiocracy if you've seen it it's from 2006 and this movie uh the joke is now that this movie was not fiction it's actually a documentary because the world is turning into that into how the world was depicted in this movie so it made me think of that movie so that made me chuckle but i also knew i was going to be talking about anger today and i knew many people were going to feel anger when they heard about what this player did rightfully so and i'm not i want you to acknowledge the anger that you feel. I want you to sit in it for a little bit and just feel it. Because when we deny emotions, when we try to push them down, guess what happens? 
we can, we can push them down temporarily and then something else will be added to the pile of things you're angry about and you're going to eventually burst and the solar plexus where the where anger comes from that's your power imagine it is a an a, um imagine a volcano ready to erupt right and it, that volcano can erupt for positive positivity but also for negativity and when we bottle our anger anger and we don't address it we don't process it we are putting ourselves in a position where eventually something is going to be said by someone in our lives or by ourselves that's going to be the last straw that broke that camel's back and that volcano will erupt and you don't know what's going to come out of your mouth you don't know what you're going to say or do and you don't know how you're going to behave how you're going to react you know as a knee-jerk reaction to that anger so as you're watching the media, I advise you not to watch too many, too many clips of, on the news. Um, you know, know, know enough to keep yourself informed, but you don't need to watch every single piece of news on what's happening right now. Um, be aware of the emotion of anger that, that might be bottling up within you. Um, be aware of how your body responds to anger, how, you, how anger shows up in your body, okay? Um, the other thing I want to talk about is when I lived in New York, I had a boss who uh, was not the most amazing person, but he taught me something very valuable, which I think is applicable here. I was a program manager. I ran clinics that were inside public schools. So I was interfacing with the Department of Health uh, principals, teachers, parents, students, and then hospital staff. So my team was that hospital staff. And that team ranged from dentists to medical providers to public health educators. So I, ha I was the, this, this like glue that integrated this entire program so that we can serve underserved children uh, who didn't have insurance who had, or had, or who were underinsured in the Bronx in New York. And you can imagine there are a lot of things that could come up that would be like red tape or fires that would have to be put out every day. And there was a team of us. We had five program managers. I was one of them. And then we had our supervisor, uh, our boss, our director. And then above that was like the guy who started the whole program. Hi, Katie. How are you? And he uh, had a meeting with us once and he said, hey, I know you guys are under a lot of stress. I know people come to you for everything from all angles, right? And you're like kind of this center and you don't have that much control because you're middle management. If you've been there, you understand. But he said something that will help you so that you don't freak out every time there's a fire that comes up that you have to put out or every time there's an issue that comes up is be aware that you are in this role as a program manager because it's needed. Things are going to come up. You are managing multiple teams. You're managing multiple stakeholders. Don't expect that you're just going to have a smooth day and nothing is going to go wrong and, you know, or else you, why are you even in that role? Do they need a program manager if things weren't going to come up, if, if disagreements weren't going to be had, if dialogue didn't have to be facilitated, if, you know, uh, parents weren't going to freak out that we were providing reproductive health services within a clinic inside of a high school. So he said, just have a level of understanding that these things may come up he, and not to focus like, yeah, oh my God, be ready for the shoot to fall on the next shoot to fall the other shoot to drop whatever the saying is but understand that it things may come up right and when you have that understanding then when things if and when things do come up you're a little bit more equipped to respond to it with a sane logical objective response instead of an emotional trigger of why is this happening why do i have to do this why do i have to take care of everything and when he gave me that piece of advice, it changed the entire game for me. The way I saw my role and the way I saw my stakeholders and the way I interfaced with everybody. Um, and right now, I think this is applicable in the, in the position we are in. Most of the souls that are on this planet, okay? I'm gonna get a little bit ethereal here. Most of our, the souls that are here are young souls. And each of us is on the soul journey toward to back to oneness, back to unity with the divine. And each of us 
is in a different place in that journey. And if you have read the book by Michael Newton called Journey of Souls or the follow-up Destiny of Souls, if you are willing to accept what he's saying about the spirit world, the majority of people that are on this planet right now are younger souls. And because they're younger souls, they do not yet have a good hold, a good a good uh, sense of control over their humanness. This is why we have mass hysteria right now. Because these souls are so juvenile, so young, so un- inexperienced, living a physical life, that they have completely let their human body take over, their human mind take over. And the human mind is ego-centered, is self-preservation-centered is fear-based. When you have this understanding, if you're willing to accept this, then when you see people in the news acting a fool, you know, fighting over toilet paper, touching microphones and, and potentially infecting other people as a, you know, trying to be all like, um, hey, you know, I'm over, I'm above this illness, but in a very idiotic way, then you un- you can under- you can have a level of understanding that, hey, these are young souls on their soul journey and they're going to make mistakes. And whether you yourself are a young soul or a soul that's more mature, that level of understanding will help you receive a um, uh, witness what's happening in this world. Because when we get angry, when we have an anger response, when we have a rage response, that energy that's bottled up, that that volcano I talked about that's about to erupt, that energy gets wasted in that surge going up your body. Like Tanya said, her face gets hot. Like I said, my blood feels like it's boiling, right? Energy is energy. It's neither created nor... um, uh, (laughs) You can't create energy or lose energy. You just transmute energy. So when we have these anger responses, we're taking vital life energy and basically wasting it in the world, in, in, in the ether, in anger, anger responses. And the more we're able to kind of catch it further back, the first sign of anger that you have, you know, whether it's your cheeks get flushed, tune in. What's your body saying to you? Destroyed. What do you mean, behavioral health? What do you mean destroyed? Um, Destroyed, yes. (laughs) Thank you. Someone's paying attention. Thank you, yes. Um, So um, when when the earlier you can catch that anger, the more, the sooner you can process it, the sooner you can reserve your vital life source energy for things that you want to create right? So using that energy that's bottled up, that's that's sitting in your lower chakras, your first three human chakras, and (laughs) correct. And I have an undergrad degree in physics, and I can't believe I lost, I couldn't think of the word destroyed. That's absolutely correct. So she's uh, quoting the law of thermodynamics, the first law, uh, which is energy must be transformed, it cannot be created or destroyed. And it can be transmuted. So our bodies are vehicles that can transmute energy, right? So the earlier you can catch the anger, the better. The earlier you can process the anger, the better. This is why it's important to understand how emotions show up in your body. And um, that's why I asked you that question at the onset. (laughs) So um, if you've had some anger responses to what you're seeing in the media, I have a lot of friends who've had anger responses to due to what's happening in the media. Uh, if you've had that, tune in to what anger feels like. Understand what anger feels like in your body. Understand, catch the earliest signs of anger and process that emotion so that you're not going to wait until it all piles up in your solar plexus and then you have an explosion. And then that's wasted life source energy that you could have put towards a new project, towards, you know, your family, towards whatever it is that you actually care about investing your energy in, literally investing your energy in. 
Uh, let's see. I think I covered everything I wanted to talk about today. <laughs> yeah. That, that is all I wanted to cover today about anger. Uh, so let me know if you guys have any questions. We have a couple minutes left. I'm happy to take questions or if you guys have comments on anger or everything that we just discussed that I just shared. Um, I'll give you guys a couple seconds to respond to that. Hey, Ellie, how are you? Okay, no questions. So um, the last thing I want to just read is from um, I am my friend is he's Muslim and he teaches uh, at his mosque. He's also a radiologist and he's uh, as, also has a PhD. He's a pretty brilliant, brilliant guy. He was um, someone I worked with early in my life uh, after college. Uh, and he sends me daily text messages, um, scriptures from the Quran, even though I'm not a practicing Muslim, but he sends it to me. And today, I don't know if he knew I was gonna talk about anger because he's one of the teachers that we've called to do a call to action, but he sent me this quote about anger. Uh, he said, it's from Hadith 45 from the Quran. Strong man, a strong man is not the man who is good at wrestling, but the man who controls himself in a fit of rage, self-discipline, self-monitoring. And that self-monitoring is what I'm talking about. Catching the anger earlier, right? So, and then the self-discipline comes from once you do catch it, how do you then respond to that, right? And the self-discipline also comes in, if you don't catch it early enough, how are you going to respond if the volcano did erupt? Um, so I thought it was very uh, timely that he sent me this uh, Hadith 45 uh, scripture. And, you know, uh, whether you're Muslim, Jewish, uh, non, you know, you don't have a religion, you you're an atheist, uh, the truth has been passed down multiple times in different books uh, through different by different teachers but the truth is the truth and that's why when you hear it it resonates and that's what we talk about a lot uh, in our oracle cards and everything else that we do so my ask for you today is to just self-monitor catch anger as early on know how your body responds to anger and process it don't push it down okay that's it guys uh I'm going to close out the live. Join me at 12 p.m. Pacific time. We're going to do a 15-minute guided meditation. Bye, guys.